<laughs> Welcome to the Actors' Choice, where the actors and actresses have a chance to talk about themselves and their careers. Join us now for the next hour as we explore the marvelous industry of acting by actors and actresses from today's exciting show business world. And now, direct from Hollywood, here's your host, Ron Brewington. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Brewington, and welcome to the Actors' Choice. Roll it. Come behind me. Play a little instrument and hey, shut the hell hey, up. Hey, now. <laughs> Let's talk this thing out, folks. There's always two damn sides to every story. So we need to go. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's it, Lucinda. You. Hi, everybody. Before we begin <laughs> with my first guest today, I want to tell you a little story. A couple of months ago, I had the pleasure—I mean, the pleasure—of meeting Judy Bell. Now, Judy has been around for a long time, and she knows a lot of people. She lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and she told me about a large contingent of actors, actresses, directors, screenwriters, etc who are located in New Mexico. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the first guest from that part of the country. You just saw an action, a kapaya knocked the heck out that dude <laughs> in that short video. She's an actress, she's a producer. She has a special twist. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Melissa Chambers. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Hi, Ron. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. What a what a serendipitous occasion to have to to bring me here. This is my this pleasure. is awesome. My pleasure. When I found out, like I said, Judy Bell, she's such a lady. She turned me on to this one, you and a whole bunch of other folks with more to come. Because we were always we didn't I didn't realize that y'all even there. Oh, we've got lots of talent here in New Mexico. It's incredible. I moved back here. It's uh Gosh, it's 2009. It's 11 years now. Uh, specifically, uh, Mark Medoff brought me back. Um, from LA? And I've been acting ever since. Right. Is this from LA that you came? No, I was actually living in Florida selling real estate after working in radio. I, you know, I had, um, you know, I'd been continued working in stage, but, um, I hadn't really thought about, I hadn't, I hadn't really wanted to go to LA. I didn't think LA wanted somebody who looked like me. Um, things have changed. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, let's talk about your acting background. When did you have your first interest in acting? Well, I, I mean, my first inch, I think acting, I think I've always been an actor. My mother, uh, she called me Sarah, Sarah Hartburn, Sarah Bernhardt since age of three. Um, you know, she had a, a, a pile of uh, Broadway show show mm -hmm. albums that I would play and I would put on all the parts and I'd make my own costume. So she'd come home from work and I would I would have whole productions and I'd put on for her. Mm -hmm. And I think she kind of knew that I was drawn to that. And then and remember in school how they had film strips so they you'd have to read and they had readers. So. I always wanted to be the reader. I wanted to be the reader. And I mean, it got so bad that, that all the other kids just stopped raising their hands. Melissa's going to read. And so when we lived in DC and my mother would drop me off or she signed me up at arena stage, they would have in the summertime, a children's program mm -hmm. for theater. And she signed me up and she would drop me off on her way to work and I would be there all day and she'd pick me up and that was it. I mean, uh, I kind of, we knew that was what I was going to do for, for school. And, um, you know, when I was in high school, that's, that's all I wanted to do. And uh, so that's, it's just it's, who I am. Right. Now you got your first test in the business back in 2012 with a short film called Anti-Minute Director's Call. Actually, yeah, I was the producer on that. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a friend of mine. Uh, and uh, it was, I wanted to get involved in film and I was a real estate broker. I had some money and I was a locations manager. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let's make a movie. And we did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Well, a year later, you played the role of a UFO enthusiast in the crime drama mystery movie, I'd Kill For You. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you guys. know, they have all those 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 true crime things on mm -hmm. um, the ID Discovery channel, and I've done several of those. Um, there's that first as a locations manager and then as an actor when they needed it. Got you. Yeah. And that's when I was like, you know what? I could do this. I could be in front of film. At first, I thought, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, fast forward to 2016, lady, and there you are playing a bus driver in the TV series, The Night Shift. Yep. Yeah, that was uh, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, that was with this great director, Oz Scott. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Oh, yes. Um, and I was prepared, you know, I, you know, the, I hear of these long days on set and I walk in and, you know, did hair and makeup. I come in, I was prepared, you know, I'm a stage actor, so I'm prepared. And I come in, I walk in, I do my bit, I, you know, I shake them awake, you know, there's a, there's a shelter down the street. I walk off, Oz looks at the, the you know, the first AD, I think, oh, I think we got it. Let's do just one more for safety. And he walks off and he goes, well, we can thank Melissa. We're going to an early dinner. <laughs> and I was out of there in literally two hours. And, I, I, you know, I walked out of going, I can't believe everybody's saying this is so bad <laughs> sitting around for film. Oh, I've learned later <laughs> after being on sets for 14, 16 hours. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, Oz Scott was incredible. We just, he got the shot and we moved on and, and right. it was great. Right. Well, we just happened to have a short cue. Roll it, Tony. Oh. Got somewhere else to go, buddy? Can't ride this all night and day, you know. It's a shelter down the street. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. All right, there you are. Great day's work. That was an easy day's pay, I'll tell you what. And, I, and that whole crew was fantastic. New Mexico's crews are wonderful, I'll tell you what. Indeed. Indeed. They brought you and a whole lot of people together, for sure. Yeah. For sure. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, here's a little trivia about Melissa. She has, IM, she has 24 IMDb actors credits, and 12 of them are TV series. And here's another one. She started in 2013 and has had at least one job each year since then. Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. That says a lot. 2017, you and the comedy TV series called Graves. You had five episodes. I do my homework. Yeah, you do. Yep, yep, yep. There's a picture of it back there. And let's see. And this year, you've, had, you've been real busy. First of all, we were the TV series Deputy. Deputy. That was cool. It was. That, that was really neat. Yes. That was a good TV show. I don't know why they can't it. I really I didn't. I don't either. And I had, well, they, they canceled me on it. <laughs> oh, okay. they the, okay. the show because they shot me. But what, now, the first they brought me in for one day on there uh -huh. as Sally, the pawn shop owner. And then I got a call from my agent and she said, they're bringing you back. And I thought, oh, I got a recurring part. And I, I get the script and I look through it and I look, and then she, they shot her. You know? <laughs> so, well, that was fantastic though. I got to do, I got to fire the gun. I got to do my own stunts. That was, it was fantastic. Yes, Stephen Dwarf did a real good job. Really great. Oh, he was great on that. And, and again, everybody, the the New Mexico crews and and all the actors that came in from LA and the and the crews that came in from LA, we all work so well together here. It's just um, it's a symbiotic symbiotic thing when we all get together to make movies and and uh, TV here. Gotcha. It really works. Got gotcha. you. You also completed a film called Deadly Illusions, written and directed Ooh, by is, yeah. Elizabeth James. That's going to be fun. That's the one I was telling you about earlier uh, when we were talking uh, privately. That um, I'm excited about this. You know, every actor looks for those kind of parts that are establishing career changers. You know, um, uh, I, I've looked for those parts like. Um, you know, I've, uh, Kathy Bates is one of those actresses and Margot Martindale that I fancy myself after, but especially Kathy Bates. And and this is one of those kind of parts that she probably would have taken early in her career. <laughs> and um, 
And Anna Elizabeth James is just such an incredible director. Um, it was so wonderful to work with her. And Kristen Davis, I can't tell you what a delight it was to work with her. So, I mean, it was just such, it was a dream come true as an actor to be on this film. And with it coming out uh, on Netflix, I just, I couldn't be more pleased. Thank you. Could you ever think of being yourself as a director? Absolutely. I've been a stage director mm -hmm. um, in the past and started, um, uh, I was the, uh, the uh, theater director at Edison State College in Florida before I moved here mm -hmm. and have directed uh, stage in, in Florida and here in New Mexico um, and Washington, D.C., um, so absolutely. Now, I think film directing, it, but you know, like like uh, film acting, it scared me at first. Uh -huh. um, so I think it's something that I would do. Um, there, and there's, uh, there's lots of little crews here that I might get together and do that later. I have a script that I wrote with my friend, Karen Borger, uh -huh. uh, called Release, that we just did a reading of. Um, that I'm looking forward to her coming back from Australia. And um, she's a film director. And uh, perhaps her direct, her, in her, her directing it and, and me being a, a writer and, and watching her direct it, and I might do that too. Okay. Melissa, yeah. there are those of us like myself who've never been in New Mexico. Tell us about New Mexico. And oh my God, New there. Mexico. You have you have to come. You have to come, Ron. I've got a place for you to stay. I've got a little studio uh, guest suite that you can stay and come visit. Um, New Mexico is gorgeous. We've got sunshine, like something like 300 some odd days a year. Um, down south, uh, it's a bit warmer. Um, where I live up in Santa Fe, uh, which is the, it's actually older than St. Augustine, don't tell them. Um, it's it's can get kind of it's chilly and we've got snow um but it's it's beautiful google new mexico anybody who's watching and come visit when you can when all this is over and we can all go visit people again yes 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 indeed you also completed a film called walking with herb yeah that i did with civil or not civil shepherd um with ross marks and um, that I did with uh, Edward James Almost. I got to play his oh, secretary. Edward and James George Almost. Lopez is also in that. Mm -hmm. And that's a very interesting film. Um, I'm not sure where you're going to be able to see that. Um, we wrap that down in Las Cruces. We filmed that down south. Um, I'm, I, that was wonderful working with Edward James almost you know he gave me you know usually when you work with another actor you don't like to get another actor's acting advice yes um but there was I was having trouble in a scene and he just very quietly said we were having we had a break in the scene and he just said you know he just gave me a little bit of a device yes and it worked it was exactly what I needed to hear mm -hmm. and he was just so you know, sweet about it. Nobody else had to hear it. Nobody else knew he gave it to me. Um, and it was, he just did it as an honest actor helping me. And I'll, I'll never forget it. And he was just incredible to work with. And I can't wait to see the work. I haven't seen it yet. I know other people who got to see a screening of it down in Las Cruces and I wasn't able to go. So that was directed by uh, Ross Marks. And um, it was written by uh, him and, and uh, Mark Medoff before okay. Mark Medoff passed. You're now filming, aren't you? You're in the middle of what, Vengeance? No, actually, I was in the middle of Vengeance. And Vengeance, uh, I think due to COVID, um, they had to, they wrote the scene out that I was going to do. So I don't really, yeah, you know, it happens. It happens. But the great news is, is, you know, during the pandemic, I got my little guest room set up for auditions. I bought all the equipment mm -hmm. and I've had some great auditions. In fact, I even I had an audition that I got off back stage that I got cast in an indie film that's filming in New York that I'm waiting to 
figure out how, you know, when we can get me out there to do that. And um, there's lots of things. My agent is like, you know, Melissa, you get ready. It's coming. There's all kinds of things here. So I'm, I'm excited about the future and what's coming, especially here in New Mexico. I was also ready to come out to L.A. and do the, you know, spend a few months out there, get a little place and, and audition for casting agents and let them know uh, who Melissa Chambers is. Right. Right, because things are going pretty good out here in LA. Can't complain. We have a problem, of course, with the pandemic, but that's you know. That's that's, but you know what? It was, it's gonna, it's gonna. We're gonna get a vaccine, and we'll all we'll go back to a new normal. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Got a couple of pictures I want to show. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Tony. Hit the first one. <laughs> there you are. There you Absolute are. Lucinda. Uh huh. Okay. Next one, please. Well, oh, that's Sybil. I spent eight hours with her on a bus in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, filming well, a scene. Bless okay. her heart. She bless her heart. She was she was amazing. Got you. Okay. Next film, please. There you go. Kristen. Kristen. She's a sweetheart. I love her. Got you. Got you. Next, please. Eddie. Okay. Eddie's always in my heart. All right. All right. That's what's got to be. Next one, please. Oh, she's wonderful from Deputy. And she, I got to work with her. And I'll tell you what. I couldn't believe her and her, how they, they were so quick with how many lines and scenes they had to go through being in these television series. I, I, it would amaze me. She's just so beautiful and just worked so hard. <laughs> when I saw these photos, I said, we got to put them on there because you are one busy lady. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like to take my picture. Next one, please. Oh, Juliette Lewis. Okay. All right. Next one, please. Oh, I can't remember his name. Ooh. What did I do with him? Where did you find that? Oh, deputy. Hey, deputy. Deputy, of course. <laughs> deputy, of course. He's yeah. so handsome. Isn't he handsome? <laughs> I had such a crush on him. And look, I got to wear makeup in that. <laughs> Usually I don't get to wear makeup. Got you. Got you. Now, I understand that you also write books. No. Uh, no. Uh, can you show the first photo there? The next one? What's this? Seaside Sweet? No, that's not me, honey. That's not you? No, that's not me. Okay. So let All me right. move there. All right. No. Good enough. Who are some of your favorite directors? Well, I think, you know, working, the, all the ones I've ever worked with, really, uh, to be honest, anyone that's hired me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But if you're talking about like just you know in, in general like directors I've seen in 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 movies and and stuff like that and yeah. um, I don't know yeah well, I, you know I go back to who I've just worked with Anna Elizabeth James Mark Gant who keeps hiring me Mark Ross or not Mark or Ross Marks. Um, Rod McCall, these people who, um, you know, the people who see me in an audition and say, there's something about her. I want to work with her. That's my favorite director. How do you define yourself as an actress? Um, I'm, I'm a chameleon. I am whatever you need me to be. Um, I'm also, I don't know, I never actually defined myself as an actress. It's like I said, it's who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just able to take text and become that person. I'm an empath. I think that's big, a big part of why I, I take text and become a, a character so easily. 
Interesting. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, if you let me go back to that. Is an actor is reflecting back. I like to take the pain of the pain and the joy and reflect it back to an audience. Pain and joy. Pain and the joy of life and reflect yeah. it back to the audience. I'm a mirror. What's the favorite role you've ever had? The what? My favorite? The favorite role you ever had. I think that was Lucinda Raines. That was mm -hmm. Lucinda Raines in Graves. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was that was five episodes. I had a nice arc with that character. You know, she started out as a as a, a hard drinking, hard hitting mm -hmm. uh, alcoholic, and by the end, she's you know she had a touch of humanity, and it's she has a nice arc through that series. That was a great series too, by the way. Got you, got you. One of the things that you go, that you are part of, and I believe and I love it dearly, is theater. Yes, that's oh. that's my heart. That's what got me here. I hear you. I have. And a, I'll go back to it. Wow. Our next guest on today, he's a British character actor, and uh, again, you have, he also he, he has that background in uh, stage, and that's the problem I see with a lot of the young people today. They come out of school, they want to be a star, but they don't yep. have stage work. No, go do stage. Go do improv. Go do stand up. Do something on the stage yes. with the audience. You have to have that back and forth. Get that feeling of the timing. Even though when you get once you get in front of a camera, you, you kind of lose that. But if once you have it, hey. it's a magic that mm -hmm. that the camera can catch. The director appreciates. Mm -hmm. Okay, they know you have it. That's why Oz Scott was able to go. I think we've got it. <laughs> because I was prepared and also the moment they say I'm ready like that's I'm going out on stage and there's no turning back nobody's going to call cut when you're on stage you know and the same I'm not ready for somebody to call cut I'm, I'm ready to push forward on any film role too hmm. what do you do when you're not working um, when I'm not working, I'm up here on the side of a mountain in Santa Fe uh -huh. uh, with my dogs, um, walking around. Um, I work on, uh, right now I'm working on my uh, script that I'm going to be, uh, we just had a reading of, and I'm hoping that that we can move forward with that. And, uh, what was the synopsis of what you're talking about? Released. It's about a woman who's, uh, she works at a, a motel and she's come off the, her last, her last day of her 10 years of probation. Yes. And in this last day of her 10 years probation, she's got to decide whether to stay there or not, but there's also has arrived at the hotel is a um some bad guys with that are doing some uh child trafficking and they've showed up at the tr the the hotel at the same time as a group of uh kids have shown up and it's uh, Actually, I, I wasn't prepared to talk about it. So um, that's, it's, it's one of those with a bunch of characters yeah. and, and um, she's got to decide whether uh, she's going to stay there and help the kids and help the people and chance getting in trouble again and losing her freedom um, or just take off. But she decides to stay. So oh, Sounds good. I can't wait to see it. It sounds yeah. good. Melissa, I want to thank you very much for being here today. We really appreciate uh, the goods that you told us about going on what's going on in New Mexico and your life thank and you. character. Thank you so, so much. Get you back again another time. Thank you so much, Ron. I appreciate it. You be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the Actors' Choice. I'm your host, Ron Brewington. Ladies and gentlemen, to our Actors' Choice Tax Squad, we're excited to announce that we've been expanding into e-commerce. Now, next year, the Actors' Choice will launch a new product line, including T-shirts, mugs, totes, backpacks, sweatshirts, water bottles, caps, and more. So get a slide note. T-shirts come in men and women's sizes, and not all designs are available in both. Okay? Now, some items that will be special order 
that you will be able to buy all of our merchandise on our website located at www.theactorschoice.org. That's www.theactorschoice.org. Okay? So please, stay tuned for more exciting news, and we may have a holiday surprise just for the TAC squad. We like that word TAC, the actor's choice. Okay? Now, to be updated on our product launch and all the happenings within the actor's choice, again, go to our website and sign up. Uh, and thanks again for being loyal TAC squad members. Finally, if you have a product, service, or an upcoming event that you'd like to see advertised on this program, please call 323-533-1036. That's 323-533-1036. Our prices are very affordable. Thank you. This is the Actors' Choice. I'm your host, Ron Brewington. Roll it. Who is that handsome young man? Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is a renowned British character actor. As you just saw, you see his face, you know exactly who I'm talking about. He has, ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? This gentleman has 114 IMDb actor credits. As we say in the business, not bad, not bad, not bad. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome veteran actor Oliver Muirhead. Oliver, God bless you for coming in today, man. Thank you so very, very much. It's entirely my pleasure. Lovely to see you. Indeed. Uh, we, the, okay. 114 acting credits? Yep. That's a whole lot of auditions. Uh, yes, that's <laughs> very true. <laughs> Woo! Help me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and even more considering a lot of my career was spent doing commercials. You know, that was our, our bread and butter for many years. Yes. Um, so uh, when young actors said to me, you know, what about this, you know, getting jobs and so on? And I said, well, you have to remember that Babe Ruth um, was not only the, the home run king, he was also the strikeout king. So you just got to swing and um, hope that sometimes you connect with the ball. <laughs> and if you're up at the plate often enough, there's a good chance that you might connect with the ball. But if you're not up at the plate, then that's yeah. it. What made you get into acting? Um, when I got married here, I was a writer. And um, writers don't get paid unless they sell stuff. Right. And um, I needed a job. So I became an actor. Now on the screen, it says actor and additional crew. What is an additional crew for the benefit of our people? Oh, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know who on earth put that up there. But I, I did work um, behind the scenes for a long time when I left university in 19, well, a long time ago, just when silent movies were finishing. Yes. Um, I worked doing everything I could behind the scenes, like making costumes, uh, making props, uh, scenery and so on i mean because that's what work was available that and construction was it pretty much right. i have a great feeling and love for actors and actresses there's things about you the inner side of you that statement that you just made tells me a lot about you and of course other actors who because they do what they do because they love what they do i mean come on they will find a way to get to, to get some up some money to work they will find a way Yes, I suppose so. I mean, I, I certainly never wanted to be an actor because, as, as I mentioned when we, we talked before the show, uh -huh. I grew up in Wimbledon, which is a suburb of, of London, South London, and it's within 15 minutes train ride of the West End, which is the Broadway of London. And there were a lot of local stars who lived there. Okay. And my understanding of being an actor was that you spent most of your days down the pub waiting for the phone to ring because it was in the days before mobile phones and you turned up at school to pick up your kids unshaven and miserable and smelling of alcohol. And I thought, oh, I don't want to be that person. And these were local stars and they were good actors. They were very good. They just seemed miserable. You know, whereas my dad went off and he was miserable up in London and I didn't see him being miserable. <laughs> 
What made you come here to US of A? What made you come to this country? Um, I came here because I was working for a guy called John Fletcher who used to run for the London International Film School, okay. um, which was uh, an important educational inst institution for a lot of Americans who wanted to escape being drafted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lot, he didn't say that, y'all. He didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is not true. Um, yeah. And um, I, I had actually auditioned for the Yale School of Drama without any money, without any chance of getting in. And John said, "I'll do. Uh, I'll, I'll. I'll shoot a recording of you." Because in those days, it was really hard to get somebody who would, you know, shoot a video. And um, so he got me a director and um, I shot, shot it at the school. And then I met him a couple of years later um, and he said, come and work for me and we'll set up a film company. But um, when the money ran out, um, because the, the Sorkins, Elias Sorkin and his brother um, didn't pay him, um, John said, why don't you go around America? And so I, I went to New York and um, then I, to Michigan and then I ended up here. I was also working as a journalist writing about museums. So a friend of mine said, I've got um, one of my biggest exhibitions, would you come and review it? And I said, absolutely. Um, so I arrived here actually about $200 in debt. <laughs> Heard the story before. Heard the story yeah, before. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, then, and then I met my wife um, the woman who's going to be my wife and I, I stayed. I'm the man who came to dinner. Outstanding. Outstanding. As you know, there are a ton of British actors in this country. Lots of them. Been. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Indeed. Uh, when you got your training, did you get any Shakespeare training? Uh, I am a classically trained actor, which is to say I've had no training at all. I'm actually barely house trained. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Alva, would you please go to your room? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm going to use the box. Um, uh, so uh, I, I, I knew that I could act. Yes. Um, yeah. I actually wanted to be a director gotcha. when, I, when I was at university. And I, I, I got a long way to being a director and I had a lot of fun doing it. Gotcha. Um, and um I really only trained by being on stage, which I think is the best way to train and making oh, yes. <laughs> hideous mistakes. So I learned by um I learned by uh, experience, I suppose you could say. But I, I did have some training along the way. I mean we, we actually when I was at university we paid for somebody to do movement training and stuff like that. 1987, your first American role, a TV series with adventure, drama, and family called The Magical World of Disney. Yes. Yes. That was your first job in America. I was I was a policeman. Yes. So you're one. I, I walked in, it was young Harry Houdini, and I, I, I walked into the Santa Monica Theater, and they were just preparing to do the, the famous... Uh, chained escape from a cube of water and as i walked in with my fellow policeman i said i hope they've warmed the water and they hadn't and the guy inhaled an entire lung of water it was like it was a nightmare poor guy and after a couple of minutes he did it again oh. yeah yeah mm. Mm. Fast forward to 2007. Of course, you did a lot of work in various roles between uh, 1987 and 2007. I mean, a lot of roles. Yeah. Uh, you played a butler in a comedy film called Alvin and the Chip. Alvin, yes. Oh, that was so much fun. And and um, one of the great things about um, my my poor sad career is <laughs> that at, at every point of my daughter's life, I have done her favorite show. Uh huh or the, the movie that she really enjoyed. And we went to see Alvin and the Chipmunks and it opens with a song. Uh -huh. And I thought my daughter was going to die of laughter <laughs> because she enjoyed the song. It was a lot of fun to do the movie, a lot of fun. 
2010, it was the social network about Mark Zuckerberg that you played. Yep. Mr. Kenwright? Yes, Mr. Kenwright, yeah. the first person to expose the power of, um, of Facebook. Yeah. Right. Got good roles there. 2017, uh, General Hospital, playing role of Lord Larry Ashton. Six episodes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I do my homework, by the way. Yes, Lord Larry Ashton, uh, with some crazy painting. And yes. I think the, the, the real highlight more for for the fans of the show was that it was Tracy Quartermain's yes. last, um, really last couple of episodes. Uh, yeah. and, and there have been a number of Lord Larry's, I think two before me, but you know, in, in the soap world, yeah. you can look completely different. Oh yes. <laughs> and that was the second soap you had done, right? You had done another soap before that. I've done a bunch of soaps over the okay. years. Um, I did Santa Barbara playing Dr. Karl Marx, the head of the Santa Barbara Sperm Bank, voted the most okay. repulsive story that year by, I don't know, whoever votes for these things. And I was in the other gotcha. most repulsive story that year as a surgeon <laughs> removing a birthmark from a baby's bottom. Okay. <laughs> Good grief. Now I understand yeah. you're currently filming a drama called You Above All. I am. You, you, you're not shooting that now? I, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Now mm -hmm. that's the problem with IMDb. I, I, I once got interviewed for a movie. Um, yes. And uh, they asked me about my career in, in uh, actually Korean horror movies. Okay. And, and I hadn't done any of them, but they listed about five. Wow. <laughs> so, so you have to be yeah. careful. <laughs> Got you. Do you get a chance to go back to Britain occasionally? I try and go once a year. Um, oh, okay. After centuries of trying to escape from Scotland, all my family went back there. Okay. Um, and they live in Edinburgh, which is a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, so I try and go back about once a year. Obviously, this year uh, I haven't gone, but I went last year to um, see my my parents. And uh, thanks to FaceTime and Zoom and so on, I can see my family that way. To stay in shape as an actor, Oliver, you are a member of Rob Brownstein's Actor Training School and Actor Space. Can you tell us about I, it? Um, I met Rob, uh, we'd done a few readings together uh -huh. and I'd, I'd seen a show that he directed and we talked about, um, talked about things and my wife said, why don't you, <laughs> why don't you Take Rob's class and Alan Wasserman, who's a member of Rob's class, oh, and yes, I yes. asked him in Devil's Disciple, I think, um, yes. said, "Why don't you, why don't you try it?" And I said, "Okay, I will." I'd, I'd never, I'd only ever gone to one acting class, and it was just a, you know, dreadful experience. Gotcha. And so I did Rob's, and it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I. I'm not entirely sure of the value of class, but what Rob's does is that it, it helps you stay up to date. Right, keep you current, exactly. Yeah, which is really important, I think. Mm -hmm. when you, it, acting is as much about behavior as it is about anything else. Yes. And, and the, the kind of work that got you jobs 10 years ago is not necessarily going to get you jobs right now. Exactly. You know, it's interesting. One of the things that I talk about in this industry is the need to stay current uh, because you got a lot of young people. I teach over at Santa Monica College. I teach broadcasting over there. But oh, I know cool. at our school, we have a theater department. Uh, you got USC, U UCLA, all have theater departments. So you figure all those students coming out of there every year, they're looking for, where's my job? Okay, about him. He got 114 credits. That don't mean nothing to me. I want a job. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, it's very important to stay current, and yes. um, I'm I'm amazed at how talented and how I'm actually appalled at how mm -hmm. talented and educated these kids are, um, because they have had opportunities that weren't available to um, old, old older actors. Yes, I mean in some ways that's an advantage. I do think it's often a disadvantage because you, you've done your undergraduate degree, you've gone uh -huh. and done your master's, and you're expecting the world to be like it is in university, and you leave, and you're going to be sadly disappointed, because yes. it's different, right. you know. Yeah. 
we have an expression that I talk about. We call OJT. They look at you like, what is OJT? I said, well, hey, you got one out there and got out of education, but you have no experience. So you got to yeah. get that on the job training. That's what OJT is. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. You, you need to know what the reality is. And the reality does change. Yes, um, I, you know, the, there, there are two things that drive change in Hollywood. One is uh, money, which is to be obeyed at all times. And the other is technology, which is to be avoided um, at all times. I mean, it took a lot for our Hollywood to change from silent to sound. Yes. And it, it took a lot to change from film, physical film, to digital film. And with that change came a lot of change for actors. And certainly the first couple of times I worked on digital film, they don't cut. You don't have that, that moment where you can go, okay, well, I can gather myself. They go, okay, we'll just do it again. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> like, 2020. 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, uh -huh. the first, I think, actually, the second time, the first time I did it was for Joan of Arcadia, and they uh -huh. were really nice and helpful. And they realized that actors um, weren't used to that, and That's they were really helpful. I, I was playing God in, in Joan. Of, I was one of the gods. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it was fun. And um, the, the second time was. I can't remember the show, but it was a crew I knew. And they just came in. I said, oh, hi, guys. How are you? And they went, well, you won't see much of us because we're just going to lock down the camera and leave for 20 minutes. Ooh. I'm like, what? They, no, we don't have to change it. OK. <laughs> have to change. You, yeah. You, you have the, in the evening, you don't have to go back and look at what you did all day. Right. Remember, remember when you had the old system, you had to go back and look at the film you shot that day? Oh, I try to avoid that. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you know, I, I try to avoid it because as an actor, I think one of the most important things for actors is to have somebody else look at it because we look at the film and we're looking at the fact that we no longer have any hair. Um, we look like an uglier version of our father. It, you know, why did we do that? And other people going up, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. You, know, <laughs> you need to have a, a, another eye, I think. And that's also one of the difficulties with self tapes and auditions you do at home. You have to be able to look at things with a greater level of dispassion. Yes. And for us poor, vain shadows, that's really hard. Yes. Yes, indeed. You ever want to be a director? Yes, absolutely. And I get to direct um, through ITC. Mm -hmm. um, I, I directed their show, Other People's Money, which helped um, as long as nobody's listening it helped sort of revive the company um, we had two great casts um, and it's a great it was a great show very timely um, great fun to do and I've directed a lot of the shows that they do through Claffy at UCLA uh, through the wonderful Dan Lowenstein um, where he, he uses um, the arts uh, um, to educate his yes. law students. He's, he's now Professor Emeritus, um, which, as his wife says, means that he still teaches but doesn't get paid. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> what do people say to you when they see you or meet you? Um, they generally reference some role that they remember me in. Uh, for a long time, people thought that I was a member of Monty Python, just because I was another. It, I, I gave up saying no, I'm not, <laughs> because those guys are older than me, if that's possible. Next question: You Listen, write books, I hear. What kind of books do you write? Um, I used. I had a fairly long career as a writer. I used to write what's called humor books. Okay. If you find them funny, otherwise they're interesting and surreal, you know, works. It, it, there was a humor book period, which we hit myself and a guy called Steve Appleby, who's a cartoonist and um, artist. Um, we, we hit in the early 80s and we did like a book a year for a, a long period and we worked for various magazines and so on. Okay. And then that then that kind of stopped. His last work 
um, was a book called Dragman, which is about a transvestite superhero. And I'm going to advertise it right now. Get it on Amazon because it's a really great book. Got you. Now you go under the name of George Mole when you. I go under the name of George Mole. My mother made me write under that name because both my parents were involved in the arts and museums when I was uh, a journalist, and she said, "Would you mind writing under a pseudonym?" I went, "No, as long as I get paid." So I've always written under the name of George Mole. Got you. Earlier, you mentioned that you did commercials. Let's yeah. see. We got a few of them that we want to see. Tombstone, uh, 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 Tombstone Pizza. Tombstone Pizza, yeah. Oh, that was, yeah, that paid the rent, paid the mortgage for a long time. <laughs> Tony, did you hear that? Roll it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Deep tight, Marshall. Nope. Any last words? Nope. What do you want on your tombstone? <laughs> Pepperoni and cheese. Where they didn't have the product and didn't Time for Tombstone Pizza. Made with the good stuff. Real pepperoni, real cheese. So it's always real good. What do you want on your tombstone? Just a little taste. They decided nope. to do a whole series of more, like four or five more, I think. So they brought back Bob and I. Fair Not enough. You. But they brought back the entire first crew, good including the director, good including good. the guy who did the food. Mm. And the only person they couldn't bring back was the shooter because he was a big time um, film uh, cinematographer and he was working on something else. But it was that entire crew. It was just really strange. Got you. You also did one for Geico? Yeah, I did a bunch of Geico's over the years. Um, I did a couple of voiceovers. I actually did my first all American voiceover, which was kind of fun. Roll it, Tony. <laughs> oh, no, not unless you pay Car insurance bills getting too hot to handle? Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Uh, you know, we're about ready to end, but before you leave, sir, I would uh, yes, sir. I would not walk let you walk out of here without remembering British actor David Prowse, who, as you know, just passed away at the age of 85. Yes. Um, there's, a couple, there's a picture of him and Darth Vader. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are, as I did my research for the show, there are a number of British actors who have passed over the last year. Let's see, Jeffrey Palmer, Johnny yeah. Lees, yeah. Margaret Nolan, she played Goldfinger. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Archie Lin Linenhurst. Uh-huh. Okay. Barbara Jefford. Yep. Ben Cross from Chariots of Fire. Yes, sadly. Yeah. Yes. Maurice Roeves, Ro Ro character actor. Maurice Reeves was one of my great heroes. He was um, promoted uh, partly by Billy Connolly, mm -hmm. um, uh, who is you know Scotland's answer to Elvis. Um, I, and I worked I worked with Billy on a movie which was just a total pleasure. But I also worked with Maurice, uh, really one of the best actors. I'd always admired his work. And we worked together revoicing um, a film and we had just a hilarious time. It is a pleasure working yes. with your heroes, especially when they turn out to be funny and wonderful yes. people. And I, I just want to say how, how much I enjoyed working with Morris. He really, uh, uh, it was a great honor and, and fun. Uh, Sir Ian Holm, he passed. Ian Holm, yes, my, my, my great hero, David Warner's hero was Ian Holm. And I once said to David, wasn't he dreadful in some movie? And he said, yes, what a relief. I realized he was human. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we got to get out of here, Aldo. But I want to thank you very, very much for taking the time to come down today. Quick question. Yes. How do you want to be remembered? Um, often. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, Tony, you hear that? He said, he said, okay. <laughs> I you hear that? <laughs> The best wishes to you. We got to get together with you. You're quite a guy. I really admire you. Absolutely. I'm get you back. Thank you so, yes, so, yes, so much. Indeed. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's a great pleasure. Thanks for our sponsors Harvey Brandon, Photography as an Art, Ron Irwin's Haiku, Start, Passion, Heart, Larry Buford's Book to the Future, Time Travel, Message in a Capsule, State Farm agent Carla Green, and veteran actor Rob Brownstein's Acting Training School and Actors Space. And of course, much thanks to our guest today, actress, producer, Melissa Chambers, and actor, 
Oliver Muirhead. And one course, special thanks to our ever, ever, ever growing audience. We get a lot of people. Be well. We'll see you the next time.